Hi, I'm Dee Hicks. This is the Hilt Academy, high impact leadership training. You know, leadership is hard. Sometimes we make it harder than it needs to be. Here's one of the ways we do that. This is all about your workplace culture. Everyone experiences workplace culture, and I get asked a lot about how do you make your workplace culture better? Well, let's wrap our mind around what culture is. It's upstream from almost everything. Culture is upstream from money and how we think about it. It's upstream from technology, from gender, from ethnicity, from age, from how we think about our laws and put them in place, from how we think about policies and politics. Culture is upstream from how we think about and how we behave with all of that stuff. Culture, especially at work, answers the question, why do we do what we do? especially in small and medium-sized groups. Really specifically though, culture is how it really works around here. Culture is behavioral. It's all about our behaviors and those behaviors that are supported by the group we're a part of and those behaviors that are frowned upon by that group we're part of. So do those supported behaviors and you get to stay in the group do those behaviors that are frowned upon, you're out. <laughs> That's how culture works. Culture is extremely powerful and it can either be accidental, it just sort of cobbled together over time, or it can be intentional where leaders such as yourself think about what are the behaviors that we wanna have in place that we support and what are the behaviors in our workplace culture that we wanna frown upon and say, we don't do that around here. Culture, how it really works around here, is held together by people I like to call keepers of the culture. There are a couple of different types of keepers of the culture. There are keep people who are keepers of the kind of humor that your culture has got. They say this is funny and that is not, and they enforce that. They are keepers of core beliefs, what you believe is true and why it's true. They are keepers of the work ethic. That's Oh, that's how fast people work. That's how hard people work. That's how they think about work. That's what we call a work ethic. There are keepers within your culture of the history, of the stories, and about what that all means. Those are all keepers of the culture. They're the ones who exemplify the culture and who actually enforce the culture by saying, eh, it's not how we do it around here. We don't do that. We do this instead. There are two particularly powerful types of keepers of the culture. The first one is what I call the keepers of the grudge. <laughs> this is a keeper of the culture who really believes that your group's identity is in the wound or in the offense or in the injustice that that group has suffered. They keep the wound alive. They talk about it a lot. They bring new people into the group. They tell them about the wound so that they can vicariously experience the wound or at least imagine the wound. These keepers of the grudge are very powerful people in some cultures. They're unwilling to forgive. They're unwilling to own their own part or even have the group or the culture own its own part in the situation that happened last year or last month or 10 years ago, these keepers of the grudge are unwilling to move on. They're stuck in time. And because that's the entire identity of that culture at work or outside of work, they can't let go of that grudge or that wound. They kind of become like that character on Lord of the Rings, Gollum, remember him? My precious. They so hang on to the wound or the offense that was done to the group and they just pet it and pet it and it becomes so precious to them that the entire culture revolves around the grudge. That's the first type of keeper of a culture. They're keepers of the grudge. There's another type of keeper of the culture. This one is a more powerful keeper. They are a keeper of the future. They are the ones who think about what the future could be and should be, and they're more defined in the way they think and act and behave in the workplace. They're more defined by what they value in the workplace based upon what we could be. Therefore, these keepers of the future are folks who embrace difficulty. When difficulty comes, they embrace it. 
They learn from challenge and from hardship. They espouse personal responsibility. We are all personally responsible for our part in the situation they're in. They're not responsible for blame. They don't think about blame. They're not even interested in blame. And in fact, these keepers of the future are beyond resilient. They actually get better the more adversity that comes their way. They're beyond resilient. It's pretty impressive. That's the kind of keeper you want to have in your workplace culture. So perhaps it's time you as a leader or a manager or a supervisor, someone who's influencing folks in your workplace to do great things, time for you to change the keepers of your workplace culture. Maybe you're ready for that. Maybe your culture has become a toxic and difficult place to be. It's time to change the culture. How do you do that? Well, one, openly talk about culture, just the way I talked about it with you. Understand what it is. Understand that we have actually created it either slowly over time or, or near time, like last month or last year. So openly talk about culture and openly talk about wanting to have a more healthy culture in the workplace. Talk about it with everyone. The second thing to do is to openly challenge those folks who you see as keepers of the grudge. This is a pretty big deal. It'll take some courage on your part as a leader. You'll need to say openly to those keepers of the grudge, you're wrong. You need to say openly to them, you're only telling half the story. And you need to take away their authority. If they have a position of authority or a, or a position where they have the ability to make decisions that affect the direction of the group, you need to take away that authority from them. The third thing you'll want to do is you need to be able to say openly to them and with other people around, we don't do that around here on this team. That's not how we function. And the fourth thing you'll need to do is to forgive and to teach people to forgive. Now we have another video here in the Hilt Academy about what forgiveness is all about. So Drew will link that right up there for you to take a look at. So I said it a lot. Leadership isn't everything, but it's the first thing. Leaders get there first. So if you're a leader or a manager or a supervisor, somebody responsible for influencing your team or your enterprise, you need to get there first with this. Address this issue of folks around you being toxic and keepers of the grudge openly and directly and remove that toxic keeper of the grudge from positions of authority and if you can from the team completely. It'll, I don't know, it'll be like removing a rock from inside your hiking boot on a long trip. You'll take it out and it'll be like, oh, I can't believe I hiked so long with that rock in there. It feels really, really good. Then when you empower people who are keepers of the culture, keepers of the future, and you are able to get them to be folks who step up and say, this is the way we do it around here. We don't do that around here. You will have a really impressive change on your hand. Like I said, leadership is hard. But don't make it harder than it needs to be by allowing those folks who are keepers of the grudge to also be keepers of your culture. Well, here's to you. Have a great day.